Hello and welcome to Bolt Action Reloading. In today's video we'll be discussing the equipment that we needed to buy to start reloading for 6mm Creedmoor. Stick around. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here and you'd like to see how I and the rest community here make our group smaller, start now by subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon. That way you'll get notified when I post new videos and you won't miss anything. Like I stated in the intro, in today's video we'll be discussing the equipment we needed to buy to start reloading for 6mm Creedmoor. Specifically, the rifle that we're reloading for is the Ruger Precision Rifle, chambered in 6mm Creedmoor. It has a 1 in 7.7 .7 twist, and if you'd like to know more details, I'll put a card up and you can go check out my unboxing of that rifle. Now, it's probably not a big shock for on a reloading channel that we're actually going to talk about reloading for our newest caliber. Basically, in today's video, we're going to overview all of the things we needed to buy to start reloading for our 6mm Creedmoor Ruger Precision Rifle. Some of the equipment we'll be talking about today may seem optional by some, but for the process that I go through, this will be mandatory equipment for my 6mm Creedmoor reloading process. Obviously, it'd be impossible to start reloading without brass, so why don't we just start there? As you guys will see on the table, we're starting with two different types of brass, Lapua and Peterson. While these might not be the cheapest brass available, if we're learning anything from our 6.5 Creedmoor reloading, that paying a little bit extra for brass definitely helped our groups. That being said, in this particular series, we're going to go straight to some premium brass and see how well it does for us. A couple of things that are going to be of particular note as we go through here. Both of these types of brass are actually small rifle primer pocket brass. Now the Peterson is available in large rifle primer. However, since we had such good luck with a small rifle primer brass in 6.5 Creedmoor, I saw no reason to change. So small rifle primers is where we're going to go. One very important note of that though is decapping. When we actually go to reload this brass, as you'll see on the screen, both of these types of brass actually have the small flash hole. What that means? Standard decapping pin is just not going to work. Now I don't currently have it laid on the table, but I'll bring it out. This is my small decapping pin by Redding. The part number is 69100. And guys, all this really is, is a standard decapping die, except it has the depriming pin for the small flash hole. Whether this particular die is required in your process is certainly going to be up to you. The one thing of note is the dies you'll see on the table are going to actually be able to accommodate either type of brass that we pick. So if you feel you don't want to have to actually decap your brass before cleaning, by all means, you can actually use the decapping pin that comes with the Forester die, and it will do all of your decapping for you while you're sizing. But that's going to be up to you. For me, I already have the die because I do this in 6.5 Creedmoor, but if you're going straight into 6mm Creedmoor, might be something you want to consider. And since we already mentioned it, we might as well get straight into the dies. If you guys have followed my 6.5 Creedmoor series, you know that I have quite a few different types of dies in 6.5 Creedmoor. For this particular series, we're going straight to our top choice of Forrester. Now, the last time I bought a die set, when we were talking about 338 Lapua, we actually bought the Benchrest set. But in this particular case, the six Creedmoor dies are not as readily available, and you have to sometimes take what you can get. That particular die set was out of stock, and I really enjoyed the micrometer seating die from before, and I have several different bullets we're going to try out, so I thought we went straight for the ultra micrometer seating die in this particular case, and bought the full length sizing die separate. Now, like I already stated, I'll put a shot on the screen, but you can see this die, it actually has a decapping pin that's compatible with the small flash hole brass, which is a very important feature of our dies, should you be going to shoot something like Lapua Brass or this Peterson Small Rifle Primer Brass. Keeping in mind the Hornady Brass is large rifle primer and does not require special decapping pin, so standard dies may not be compatible with this brass. But knowing that these are, this is exactly where we decided to start off our project. Also getting a seating stem that we knew that was going to work with our high ballistic coefficient bullets was very important, and I didn't think we would be wasting any money on this particular setup. We went straight to Forrester, got a product that we've had good luck with in the past, and hope we're going to have good luck with it for this project. If you guys are interested, I'll show you the part numbers on the screen. This is a standard full length sizing die. Yes, I full length size for my bolt action rifles. And honestly, when I use this die, we'll probably actually be removing the entire decapping assembly since we'll be bringing to our next component we bought. You'll also notice on the table we have a Sinclair mandrel die. This specifically is a turning mandrel die, and we're going to use this after we full length resize to set the final dimension on our neck. This should set our neck tension at two thousandths, which has proved to be our optimum neck tension. And instead of getting both sizes that are available, one or two thousandths, we went straight to the neck turning, which is two thousandths. And that's what we're going to be using for this project. Not to circle too far back, since we're still talking about sizing brass, there are other die options, but 
there are things that you need to consider. I actually could not find any mainstream lead dyes that were available on the market. And even if there were, I don't know where I'd pick them. I will say if you go straight to Lee's website, there actually was their standard set of dyes available. As I've said too frequently already, you'll know that I actually have the ultimate die set in 6.5 Creedmoor. But from what I can tell, at least the making of this video, this die set is not available for 6mm Creedmoor. They have the red tray set, which comes with your standard die. It does not come with the collet die. Even if I could get a die set that did have the collet die, I'm not sure that I would be able to use it. Having the small flash hole, whatever we're going to use to put through the flash hole, has to be compatible. I know the decapping pin that comes with this die set is not compatible with the small flash hole brass. I'm sure as time goes on, other options will be available. Know that if you're going to go with these types of brass, making sure that decapping pin or whatever you're going to use to decap is compatible with the flash hole is very important. Another thing of note, no matter what die set you pick, if you've already been reloading for 6.5 Creedmoor, that standard number two shell holder is going to suit you just fine. Or in this particular case, you can see I've got a Forrester press. It doesn't require specific shell holders. And so the standard shell holder that they have, I've got with my system is going to work just fine. Moving right along, we'll talk about the projectiles that we've picked. Might as well go from lightest to heaviest. Starting off with the 105 Burger. I actually was had trouble finding these in stock anywhere, but I did find someone that had a couple boxes in stock, and so that's where I ordered some of my equipment from. We've started off only purchasing 100 of the 6mm 105 grain Burger Hybrid Target projectiles. These have been a favorite of a lot of people, and there's quite a bit of information on some of the forums about this projectile, so I'm very optimistic that this will perform well. Not the best ballistic coefficient, but if it shoots the smallest groups, we still might want to evaluate it. Moving the next up the chain, the 107 grain Sierra Match King will be one of the ones that we'll try as well. Also popular on the forums for being a good shooter. Hopefully, we'll find the same performance in our barrel. Moving even a little further up the chain, same company, these 110 grain Sierra Hollow Point Boat Tails. The only thing that makes me nervous on these is, if you'll remember, we talked about in the beginning that our rifle has a 1 in 7.7 .7 twist. Sierra does recommend a 1 in 7 inch twist or faster barrel for this projectile, so we're going to have to test it to see if it's going to stabilize. And since we're already looking at that stabilization point and thinking we might not be able to make it, the next option might seem a little silly. You never know unless you try, right guys? The other projectile we've started with is the 150 grain DTAC. The only place that I could actually find these was Superior Shooting Systems website. And I honestly was trying to get them uncoated, but they didn't have it on there. So this will be my first experience actually loading coated projectiles. If you guys can see on the box, for a 6mm projectile, a ballistic coefficient claimed of 0 0.620 is absolutely phenomenal. So if we can get this 115 grain DTAC to shoot, this will be our projectile of choice, hands down. Going over a couple more odds and ends, you guys will see there's a 6mm Creedmoor modified case. For some of you guys that might not be familiar with loading, actually finding where we're touching the lands with some of our projectiles is a very important piece of information, especially when we start to load for a rifle and chasing those lands as we burn the throat. Since this is a smaller bore than our 6.5 Creedmoor, we will expect to erode our barrel slightly more rapidly, and being able to measure that dimension is important to maintain accuracy in our rifle. On top of that, there's actually been several reports of people actually having a very short throat rifle and some stock ammunition actually hitting the lands, which is very rare. So, before we start loading any of these, we're going to have to find the lands with all of our projectiles to determine what safe cartridge overall length will be. And if we're going to actually try putting anything in the lands, we're going to have to be careful what our powder charge is and make sure we're not going to overpressure our rifle. Though not the easiest thing to find, still a very important piece of our puzzle for our reloading scenario. Moving right along, we're going to get into things that might be considered slightly more optional. But this is be, again, a matter of opinion. You'll see I'll, I put on the table the actual correct insert for my amp annealer, number 17. To be honest, it's the same for my 6.5 Creedmoor. And so I didn't actually have to procure it to add this particular caliber. However, had I needed a new insert, I certainly would have bought it to make sure I'll be able to anneal my brass to keep my brass as consistent as possible. Another thing you'll see on our pair of calipers is our headspace gauge. I'm not sure Hornady actually has 6 mm Creedmoor listed under here, but I'm going to use the same insert we used for 6.5 Creedmoor. Basically, this is a 6.5 Creedmoor case neck down to 6 mm In fact, I think one of the more popular options of generating brass for this, honestly, is probably just running 6.5 Creedmoor brass through a 6 mm Creedmoor die to create the new brass. But all the brass we'll be using will be correctly head stamped for the actual caliber we're intending to shoot. The other insert you'll see is actually the, the correct insert for the 6mm projectiles. 
So we can measure what's called CBTO or cartridge-based ogive. I will warn you, I don't typically give out that typical measurement when I talk about my reloads, simply because I'm not sure that your tools are dimensioned exactly how mine are. And though I do use that to track my reloads, I do not like to quote CBTO on my reloads, simply because I don't want you to think that your tools are identical to my tools. I will just let you know that the actual overall length, what it was, more of a factor of how it fit in my magazines and that it functioned in the rifle. I don't intend to load any ammunition for this that will be single feed only. One other piece of equipment we haven't talked about yet is how are we going to trim this brass? Now, if you have a manual trimmer, which I do, I guess that you could use that. However, if you shoot a lot, it does get very tiring. My Lapua case and 6.5 Creedmoor haven't needed a whole lot of trimming, but if they had, I certainly would be using my Gerard trimmer to trim them. It's so much faster and so consistent, I could not see not buying the correct insert so I can actually use my Gerard trimmer to trim the 6mm Creedmoor cases. So, probably a luxury, but in my case, it certainly was something I was going to procure. I thought about not including this video because obviously since I've shot 6.5 Creedmoor, I certainly have most of the usual suspects as far as powders are concerned. But if you're just getting this caliber and you're a little bit newer to reloading, I thought I would throw a couple powders on the table you might want to consider getting. As far as 6.5 Creedmoor is concerned, I've had excellent luck with H4350, Reloader 16, as well as IMR4451. There's certainly a much longer list, but if you can get your hands on at least one of these three powders, I think that you will be starting off on the right foot and likely be able to get some results that you'll be happy with. But to each into their own. Now, I didn't really lay out any primers today. I'll put another card up if you guys want to go check it out. I've done some significant primer testing in 6.5 Creedmoor, especially with the small rifle primers. And I'm going to at least initially base my results on that. I have some CCI 41s. I've also had really good luck with the Fed 205 Match AR rifle primer. Both of those have a hard cup which has kept the primer cratering to a minimum, as well as been able to get very consistent ignition. But if those guys aren't your primer choice, by all means, pick what you think is going to be the best for you. Basically, this is the equipment that I'm going to use to start reloading for 6mm Creedmoor. I'll probably have an initial reloading video out sometime in the near future showing what we're going to do for our initial prep steps for this brass. The only thing that I'm actually going to do is run the expander mandrel through the necks just to make sure, even though I probably don't need to. And we're going to start primer powder and bullets for that brass. So whether you guys are going to start reloading for 6mm Creedmoor tomorrow or not, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have any comments or questions, please post those in the comments section below. If you're not subscribed to the channel, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button, turn the bell notification on so you won't miss next week's video. And until then, stay safe in small groups.